Toen een rouwende moeder haar zoon uit zijn kist haalde tijdens een begrafenis, was iedereen geschokt. De reden achter haar handeling is echter hard verscheurend en zal je in tranen in je ogen afgaan. Toen Sarah en Jim ontdekten dat zijn baby verwachtte waar ze het dolgelukkig was. En toen kleine Edward werd geboren, geloofden ze stellig dat ze nooit gelukkig waren. Maar waar, direct na zijn vijfde verjaardag, begon de eens gezonde en levende boy te klagen over aanhoudende hoofdpijn, gevolgd door heddings en shiver. Hij was absoluut niet meer zijn gewone gebruik, hij bleef opgelikt te zijn, en zijn ouders merkten zeker dat de dramatische verschillen in hem waren. Zijn ouders merkten zeker dat de dramatische verschillen in hem waren. Bezorgdheid sloop in de harten van Sarah en Jim, terwijl ze hem haastig naar het ziekenhuis brachten om antwoorden te vinden voor de aandoening van hun lieve zoon. Maar de diagnose kwam als een verwoestelijk blauw. Arme Edward had chronic leukemia. Gelukkig was de ziekte in een vroeg stadium en de artsen waren van overtuigd dat het chemotherapie het verkomende Edward's life by several years, at least until medical and technological progress would find a revolutionary way to eradicate the terrible and unfortunate problem from within. Despite this reassurance, Sarah, normally composed and strong-willed, felt her legs give way beneath her with heartbreaking belief at this cruel twist of fate. Noticing her reaction, Jim couldn't help but be taken aback by her melodrama in such trying circumstances. Sure, he was devastated too, but Sarah seemed to be extra upset and had taken it to the next level. Edward was upset at seeing his mother cry so hard, and Jim was angry at his wife for allowing him to see her like this. In the midst of this confusion and pain, Edward was allowed to go home for the time being. Under strict medical supervision, he would have to return to the hospital soon. But for now, doctors recommended keeping him comfortable at home. But the car journey back was veiled in silence, and Jim found himself lost amidst both the shock of his son's diagnosis and the rage simmering within him regarding Sarah's sudden emotional outburst. He drove home almost completely absent-minded. Turning into their driveway, words between them were scarce, and upon walking. Waren er weinig woorden te zijn? Sarah silently headed upstairs and locked herself away in solitude within their shared bedroom. This left Jim reluctantly responsible for attending to Edward on his own, which in itself wasn't a problem at all, but it still left a lot of unanswered questions hanging heavy in the air. Days turned into weeks where emotions ran high and remained unspoken throughout the small confines of their home. Trepidation lingered alongside regret for opportunities missed during carefree times long gone by. One day, Jim had to leave the house to go and get some shopping supplies. They very rarely ventured outside now, and the family hated to be separated. Despite the tense atmosphere, Jim reluctantly entrusted Sarah with Edward's care. It was a decision weighed down by a looming cloud of suspicion and resentment that cast long shadows upon their once perfect love. Barely moments after Jim traversed the threshold, Sarah consumed Sarah as Edward crumpled onto the ground in wretched agony, passing out. Sarah's heart pounded in her chest as panic surged through her veins, propelling her in swift action. Scooping up little Edward in her trembling hands, she raced to the car and sped towards Hulp at breakneck speed, spurred on by the adrenaline coursing through her veins. Sarah frantically called Jim, who had only just arrived at the shop. He abandoned his car and sped to the hospital to meet them. The sight of his son's haggard face and lime, seemingly lifeless body drove an eruption of emotions within Jim, and he suddenly snapped at Sarah, accusing her of mistreating his boy and making the atmosphere tense at home for the past few weeks. It felt good for him to get all his anger and frustration out, even if it was misdirected. He felt a pang of regret witnessing his wife's anguish-filled tears cascade down her cheeks as though they mirrored his own inner torment. With a quivering voice laced with sorrow and tragedy dating back to her youth, Sarah spilled the beans as to why she had been acting that way since hearing of Edward's diagnosis. She confessed that she had lost her childhood best friend to chronic leukemia, the very same disease that now ravaged their beloved son from within. The anguish etched across her face proved to Jim that Sarah was speaking the truth. Stories of grief buried deep within, resurfacing with relentless force as she came face to face with this unimaginable déjà vu, haunting her present reality. She had not wanted to relive the past by discussing it with Jim. 
The truth was that the death of her childhood friend had affected Sarah more than she could ever know. She had been truly changed by this horrific occurrence and had not dealt with the consequences of going through something like that at such a young age. If she had maybe spoken to someone or tried to deal with her emotions in a constructive way, then perhaps she would have dealt with Edward's diagnosis differently. But as it was, all of the fears and emotions that Sarah had locked away for so many decades had finally come spilling back out. As Edward barely battled against this condition, it became evident that it was not a war that he was going to win. It was a race against time and medical obstacles, and he became gaunt as his vitality slowly ebbed away from him. Eventually, the poor young boy's body gave out completely, and Edward slipped away peacefully with his parents by his side, holding his hands and whispering to him that he was going to be okay and that they loved him. The heavy weight of loss descended upon them all as sadness engulfed their home. Friends and family gathered together one grey morning to lay little Edward to rest in a muted graveyard dotted with mournful sorrows. The air grew thick with sorrow as the final moments approached and sobs could be heard from everyone. But just before the closed casket was lowered into the dark, cold ground, Sarah's anguished cries shattered the quiet. She could no longer bear the thought of separating from her precious boy without one final embrace, an unspoken goodbye left lingering for eternity. Jim, Feeling his torment Jim, mirrored within Sarah's anguished wails, silently gave a solemn nod to the sympathetic undertaker standing nearby. He wasn't sure this was the right thing to do, but he knew that his wife needed this opportunity to say her final goodbye. With hearts heavy with empathy, they gently pried open Edward's casket, allowing Sarah one final opportunity to hold her beautiful baby boy within her motherly grasp. Weeping uncontrollably, Sarah enveloped her little boy with a tender embrace, tears mingling with whispers, promising eternal remembrance softly uttered into his lifeless ears. Lifting him slightly, she spoke to her boy, amidst gut-wrenching sobs, she vowed that if they were ever blessed with children again, Edward's memory would live on and illuminate every moment shared. She picked him up, and it was as if she was in some kind of daze or a terrible dream. She had the body of her son in her hands for the last time, and as the tears fell from her eyes, she let out a scream to the universe. No parent should have to say goodbye to their child in this way. Sarah felt how light Edward was in her arms. It was like Sarah he wasn't real, who licht as if he were some kind of ragdoll. It was as if he niet echt tears fell from her cheeks as she made him promise after promise and vow after vow. How would she carry on living without Edward in her world? She didn't know, but she had to. She'd done it before when she lost her best friend, and she would do it again. No matter how bad the pain was, or how broken her heart might be, Sarah just had to carry on. There was no other option. Eventually, Jim silently put his hand on his wife's back and wiped away his own tears as he told her that it was time. Looking around, Sarah saw that everyone's heart was breaking at the sight of the mother and her son, and the congregation wept loudly, their sorrow resonating around the gravestones. Neither Jim nor Sarah would ever forget Edward, nor would their love for their little boy ever die. But that is the true burden of love. So now it's over to you. What did you think of this incredibly heartbreaking story? How would you have interpreted Sarah's initial reaction to Edward's diagnosis? And how would you have felt if you'd been at the funeral witnessing such a heartbreaking goodbye? As always, we'd love to hear from you, so be sure to leave your thoughts and opinions in the comment section down below.